Do you think Malaysian Airlines flight was taken by UFOs or went into a portal? I think it went into a portal. A porta potty. A porta potty. <laughs> what do you guys think? Run that intro in three, two, one. Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy. And thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Griffin Armament Dual Lock 7 in 30 cal, and also what makes it so unique and so special with the mounting solutions, all that type of stuff. But before we get started, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. You guys know the drill, every YouTuber says it. You know, hit that notification bell, hit the subscribe, but it really does help us out. I was always one of those guys who was like, Gosh, yeah. these guys are always freaking trying to get these these likes, mm -hmm. and it actually does help. So I've watched so many videos over the years without subscribing, and now I feel or bad. Or bell like, <laughs> or not even thumbs up in anything, yeah. Now I feel bad. Yeah, now I get it. Now I like everything, even yeah. if it's absolutely horrible. Yeah. Uh, another thing that helps also is that the channel, and also the community, is your knowledge. So comment below your experiences. with. If you have a Griffin Armament can, what are your experiences below? Comment below. There's so much knowledge that is, gets passed around in that comment section. It's amazing to see. And also does help out the channel. So um, let's go with a disclaimer. Okay, so this can was provided to us by Griffin Armament. So this episode is brought to you today by Griffin Armament. Thank you, Griffin Armament. I have, as you guys know, if you've watched any of our videos in the past, when we've talked about the Recce 5 can, yeah. or uh, which we purchased directly ourselves, and then the, um, what is the name of the rifle? I can't remember. The uh, the Recce, no, the Griffin Armament marked Mark One Patrol. Yeah, Mark One Patrol. Yep. So the fourteen five Mark One yep. Patrol that yep. we ran that Recce Five can on. Um, fantastic rifle, fantastic can. Um, so I've been a fan of Griffin Armament for quite some time. So it was really cool for them to reach out to us and say, hey, that they wanted to work with us and send us some product. Yep. Uh, we got a lot of product coming down the pipeline from them. We have pistol suppressors. We have you know additional rifles, ambi lowers. Yeah. Um, they, they have been super cool with us and we are so excited to work with them. 100%. So with, with having, you know, Griffin Armament send us this can, one of the things that we are very proud of and continue, will, will continue to do is be as unbiased as we can and, and just give you our opinions, um, whether a product is sent to us or not. So, you know, Griffin Armament is under the full understanding that we're just going to talk about our experiences with it. We're not going to sway things either way, um, but literally just give you our feedback, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, um, we're not uh, we're not the we're not the channel that's going to tell you to go out and buy this Griffin Armament can. Um, a lot of lot, that's not what we typically do. We're you know we're a channel that's just going to give you our thoughts and our feedback and what we kind of think about it, and then that way you guys can make an intelligent purchase. Yep. So, um, all right. So let's jump right into the specs. My favorite part. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, really don't Fine. care about specs. Eric but is uh, flipping through the book with specs. Um, initial impressions uh, when I first got this can in. Very lightweight. Um, mm -hmm. I do believe, uh, talking about specs, what's this thing weigh? So this thing weighs at 12 and a half ounces. Okay, so yeah. first impressions, the very first thing you do when you pick this thing up, it's like, wow, that's light. Yeah. Okay. Um, starting kind of back from the back side, what do, what do they call this lockup system? Here? So they call it the dual lock, and it's and it has a taper mount that's built into it. And I'll let you kind of talk about what makes taper mount so awesome. Um, I personally like taper mounts. I know there's a lot of different types of mounting systems out there, uh, Surefire, um, Chemo mounts, mm. just a ton of different types of different locking mechanisms. Most of these rec mechanisms have some type of, if you can hear it, mm. Yeah, ratcheting ratchet. system, yeah. okay? Um, the problem that I find with the ratcheting systems, especially like in the chemo mounts and certain other manufacturers out there, um, that you get a very, very inconsistent amount of torque, Right. okay? So if I go to put this can on now, I go down, I lock it on, and then I twist that thing down, um, I don't get it all the way closed or or there's not enough tension there where I get it, you know, um, in a different spot than what I initially zeroed, Yeah. okay? I'm probably gonna end up with some type of point out Impact shift, right? right? POI shift. So if I mount this can on, I shoot it, I zero it, I take it off, I stow it away, I go shoot it on another gun, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and I come back a couple of days later, a week later, a month later, and I go to put this back on, and I lock it back in, and I go shoot again, I'm probably potentially going to have some type of 
point of impact shift mm. from my zero. Now, some cans are a little less than others, but, um, and it varies. Sometimes it's very inconsistent. You could say, okay, well, every time I take my can off and, you know, put it back on, I get, you know, a quarter inch shift to the left or to the right, right. Uh, whatever that may be. What we typically find in taper mount systems, and this is why I'm a huge fan of it, and this is one of the reasons why I like the Recce 5 can, is because it did have a taper mount. So when you go to put that can on, um, you have two, two tapers that are going to come together yeah. and it's only going to go down so far. Yeah, it just stops gonna, at the same stops. spot. It stops time. virtually at the same spot every single time. And then what Griffin Armament did that I do like is they added a locking collar to it. Yeah. It's not a ratcheting style locking collar or anything like that. Basically, all you do is put a little bit of tension, downward tension on it and you let go and that's it. And then you have a spring tension here. So now we have something, taper mount, Nice and simple, screw it down. Don't have to worry about any kind of ratcheting teeth or anything yeah. like that. That's another thing on the ratcheting style cans. Um, you guys know that we like the Yankee Hill Resonator. Uh, mm -hmm. The Resonator R2 and stuff like that. We have a Resonator R1 that we've put <laughs> <laughs> an unbelievable amount of rounds through. A lot. But we, what you will start to find at some mm -hmm. point in time is that ratcheting system with those teeth, they start to wear down. Yeah. So tension has to get tighter and tighter just to hold that can on. With a taper mount system, you're not going to have that. And what Griffin Orman has done is they've taken their taper mount from like their Recce 5 can and now added a locking collar basically yeah. to it, which I think is really, really cool. It kind of is a legacy design because I mean, I feel like the taper mount that came out, you know, during the Mark 12 days. Uh, even, yeah. You know, like. Taper mount systems or just using tapered systems in general uh, when you're threading two pieces together um, throughout all kinds of industries um, yeah. and machining and everything uh, have, have been used for, for a very long time. So, right. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's something that I, I, not to be confused, you know, and this is something I personally was confused about this early on when I was getting into suppressors, which a lot of folks are now, I feel like, getting into suppressors now. It's more common. But one of the things I thought about with POI shift was, oh, when I take the can off, shoot it suppressed, take can off, and then shoot it unsuppressed, what's my shift? Yeah, which you know, is which there is. That that's is based, something, there, yeah. There's a point of impact shift that comes from that. That's just going to be natural be just for based off of, um, you know, um, maybe potential increased velocity by yeah. the can. Um, the harmonics in the barrel, yeah. um, now I'm adding this weight out to the end of the barrel. Yeah. So um, typically that shift is going to usually be pretty consistent. You can usually uh, account for that. Uh, you may have like a half an inch to an inch shift based on your barrel, based on your gun, right. um, things like that. So yeah. that, that, one's pretty easy, that one's pretty easy to account for. The one that's not is when you have, you know, you take the can off, put it back on, and now I got a quarter inch shift to the left or a yeah. half inch shift to the left, mm -hmm. or, or now my gun's not even remotely even close to being zero. I'm three, four inches off at 50 yards, yeah. which we've seen that in, in some cases. We've actually seen it in some cases. Uh, I'm gonna, I hate the chemo mount. Um, no offense, guys, you can, you can bash me all you want. You Oh, let's just talk about our, you, what are we experiences? You can, you can jump down in the comments and, yeah. and say, oh, chemo is the end all be all, whatever. I hate the chemo mount. I've seen more cans fail because of the chemo mount system, because the chemo mount itself on the can mm -hmm. fails at some point in time. Yeah. And get baffle strikes. Um, and get baffle strikes. So yeah. uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a bad mount system. Uh, dead airs. I think it starts with a Z. I can't remember what it's called, but basically it's almost like a taper mount system. I think that's actually a better mount system that they have. Yeah. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of the chemo mount. If you got one out there, by all means, keep running. If you choose to do so, if you got, if you've had great luck out of it, continue running it. Mm. But I've had several baffle strikes, including just recently um, with a with a suppressor that we sent back to a manufacturer. Yeah. That had a chemo mount on it. Um, actually, I've sent three dead air cans back. Wow. So. Well, something that's also cool that, that Griffin Armament did send to us was the the dual lock mounting system. Yeah. So, like, for example, that one can, when it comes back, most likely we're going to take that chemo mod off and put this dual yes. lock on there. Correct. So that way he can run, um, you know, dead or, uh, you know, the dual lock system and not have to worry about a baffle strike again. Which is, which is definitely handy. There's a lot of manufacturers out there. So if you're interested in getting into uh, a taper mount system, uh, and then you still kind of want that locking collar. Uh, this is great. I'm glad that mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad that Griffin Armament is selling this because this is just a standardized thread pitch that pretty much almost every 
uh, every manufacturer that builds cans now utilizes. So I can throw this on my Yankee Hill. Yeah. I can throw this on my, you know, my Sandman. I can throw this on my Nomad. You know, yeah. I can throw it on uh, my Liberty Suppressor or whatever. Uh, right. So there's a bunch of different cans that uh, that we can bounce this around between. And now I can, you know, get into a taper mount system. Uh, typically have a little less POI shift, have something that's more consistent when it comes to the locking up. So. Yeah. You know, something else that was really interesting about this system was like, you know, is they're, they're really trying to think about the end user in mind when it comes to what is going to be the most accurate that we can possibly make it. You know, the what least amount of, of POI what, shift. At the end of the day, what are some of the failing points that we find? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what you'll find in some taper mount systems uh, where, you either, you either end up with two things. Um, they end up locking on each other so tight that you can't get it off right. because they pretty much almost cold weld themselves together. Yeah. Um, so they end up locking or carving locking themselves together at the two taper joints like that, or they will walk off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what Griffin Arm did is like, hey, you know what? Let's make this thing a little more robust. Let's add a locking collar to it. So now we know we have this thing. It's going to stay on for the guys that are actually out there running their guns. Almost like the best of both worlds. Yeah, best of both worlds. So. Yeah. You know, it's funny because the Griffin guys, they actually, the owners used to be snipers. So, mm -hmm. you know, accuracy is a big deal for them. Um, and you can kind of see that with the way that they design this. You can system. tell they're engineers too. So, yeah. like, um, and all their stuff. Yeah. I'm we, definitely. We an love engineer. engineers. I'm an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> engineering good terrible jokes yeah exactly uh, <laughs> but uh what yeah. are some other all right so we're at the back side that's enough mm -hmm. about the the dual lock system i, I think, think we actually, beat this yeah that's to death. but it is it is a cool feature yeah. it's actually probably uh one of my favorite things about the can yeah so um yeah. kind of moving forward do they do they mention what material this thing is made out of there? so this is made out of h900 seracoded 17 dash 4 ss and okay. 718 incono which if you know what that means <laughs> Okay. Is that Spanish? No, that's the metal. <laughs> oh, that's what I knew. I knew that was it. Well, I, I was just checking uh, if you guys. So knew. that's the metal, basically between the baffles and the uh, and the and the external housing of the can. So 17, uh, 17 four stainless. Yeah. So um, very durable metal. So. Yeah. This, uh, and it's seracoded, is what they do. It is seracoded, okay. and this one also is rated. Is you know the dual lock seven is thirty cal, so it's, you can use seven six two, um, five five six. You're in a blackout. Uh, the dual lock five is their five five six version. Okay. So. What is yeah. the what is the as far as seven six two does it say like three hundred win mag or anything like that in the specs? Uh, it doesn't say. It says rated for up to three hundred PRC. Okay, three hundred PRC. So yeah. basically like a three hundred win mag. And stuff yeah, like that. So, yeah, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we What's haven't ran price? this. This the this one. Uh, we've ran it what on a three hundred eight. That's the biggest caliber. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we ran it on a bolt gun three hundred eight and three hundred blackout and a three hundred blackout so yeah. far, and then a bunch of five five six through it. It's got yeah. a ton of five five six through it so yeah. far. So um, as far as the Price MSRP is 1095. Okay. Um, but something to add to that is, I think Griffin actually just did a campaign, but they were running campaigns where if you bought one of their cans, they would send you a $200 rebate for your tax stamp. I will also tell you one of the cool things that Griffin has um, is, and you can go you can go through a dealer or you can go directly to them. You basically you can set up an account. So if you are, you know, uh, prior military or you mm -hmm. know law enforcement or anything like that, they actually have a really really solid, basically kind of like Glock's Blue Label program. Okay. Griffin Armament has one, so you'll go on their website, you'll create an account. Once they approve you with your credentials from there then you can purchase a suppressor you can actually even purchase that suppressor directly straight from the dealer oh. and then basically griffin armament will give a credit back to the dealer so you can buy the can from the dealer at the discounted rate it's not like glock where we have to have a, a, a set serial number um griffin basically pretty much any serial number that we pull off the shelf mm. You know, from there, I can take it. And, uh, you know, Eric obviously being, you know, active still, yeah. uh, or when he retires, if he created the account, he can buy it from me at a discounted rate uh, through through their uh, discount program. Yeah. So it's a really, really cool program. Go check it out. So yeah. uh, outside of that, so kind of moving forward, what do they have going on up for on the front side here? Do they? Do they this... So, yeah, the, the, the thing that they have with that is really interesting is if you actually look, and, and in the B-roll, you can see it right here. Um, the end cap has these little vents. So you've got your center hole, and then you have three vents that go around the outside. Um, it's almost kind of where it's a great spot for that gas to kind of push through. Um, and as far as the the blowback and the, the flash signature, that's where you're really going to see those vents kind of really be incredibly effective, right? So like, um, whenever we were shooting night vision, mm -hmm. All those sparks. So most time, you, we actually did a test in the night vision Bravo 
of course. We grabbed everybody's rifle one by one. So I ran, I ran everybody's rifle. I would call out the shooter's name. I'd call out their rifle. They would tell me what suppressor they were running or what flash device there or flash suppressor or whatever. And they stood about 35 yards away and they got to see and, and record under night vision the amount of flash, flash coming flash. out of the end of the can. Yeah. So if you come to our Bravo class, you will get data about how much signature your can or your flash suppressor is actually providing or mitigating. So with this with this dual lock, the flash suppression, it was like, you could see like it was pretty good, but it spread that out. So if you look mm -hmm. at like an A2 flash hider, it's not getting rid of the flash. Um, it almost just disperses it into all these different direction so that way it's so hard to figure out where the heck it's coming from yeah um, so the so it has it has basically uh i don't know what they call their technology as far as that but it has a way of releasing gases mm -hmm. out the front yeah um and it has a basically a flash suppressor mm -hmm. built onto the end cap here uh, on the front of the suppressor so it's not like a traditional can where you have all the blowback that's coming back correct. so it's not as gassy in your face correct okay yep. so it has a way of relieving some of the gas out the front it holds it in there for as long as it possibly can and then it will then it will slowly yeah i would look at it out the front from side. from as a southpaw and eating you know as far as suppressors go I can really get a taste for a fine-tuned or really good suppressor How as far would as you, gassing. Because I know people are going to ask, um, shooting this, um, now the, the shortest gun that you've currently ran it on is a Southall, what is 12.5? 11.5. 11.5, okay, so an over gas system. Yeah. How would you compare the gas blowback that you have in your face, uh, let's just say, to a Surefire? Right. Uh, I would say probably maybe 30 to 40% reduction, reduction? Okay. Yeah, of yeah. gas in my face because okay. I can literally see it. It's almost like those those vents are not necessarily for braking, even though it does reduce some recoil, like you can actually feel it, but you can see that gas bleeding out, mm -hmm. out the front, so that way it's not coming back into my face from the chamber. Okay. Um, so it's, it's it's been really nice, but at the same time, they're able to keep that rugged design, mm -hmm. you know, whereas, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of cans right now are going into like more futuristic ways of manufacturing them. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of see how those are going. I don't think there's, there's some time to be had to see how effective those can be for a long period of time, you know, but the Surefire has got such a long history period. So like- Yeah, this particular Surefire right here is sitting around 30K yeah. through it. So uh, it's got a lot of time on it. Um, you know, a lot of these newer design cans and stuff like that. Obviously, this is not a 3D printed can, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but uh, I would imagine this thing is probably gonna last her a long it's time. It's gonna last a long time. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's that's something that I think. Which we will give you guys an update as yeah. we as we go along. Mm -hmm. um, this this can now is probably sitting around about 2K yep. or so, uh, about 2,000 rounds. So we, that's, we will that's do... That's also combined, 5.56, five, yeah, 300 correct. black, 7.62. Five, five, six, 300 blackouts, uh, 308, pretty yeah. much, just a combination of all. About 2,000 rounds that we have have through it. Um, we will, you know, give you a long-term update mm -hmm. like we do most of the time if we have any issues that we run across anything or sometimes yeah. we'll just kind of revisit it that you may see like in one of our build videos that we're still rocking this can or yeah. running this can. So. Yep. Yeah, the one thing that's also really good about this can is they have a 32 decibel reduction as far as your hearing, but the tone is what you really want to find in a good can. And the tone on this thing is pretty legit. Like yeah. it, it is, it is. What it do they say great. for what do they say their minimal barrel length is for 5.56? Does it say it in there? So, uh, so I'd probably say what 10.5 or something like that, 10 inches. So. Yeah, I'd have to do some more research on that. Okay. We'll we'll put it across here. Yeah, because so, you guys are going to ask. So. Well, look at the ticker. Yep. The ticker, yeah. So. Um, but we yeah, we've stuck on eleven five, um, and also with the length of that can, I'm assuming that. Yeah. But well, it's on the ticker. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I've been happy with it. Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, I guess we, I guess you could say we're a little biased. Um, we 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 like the Griffin stuff. We've, yeah. we've had great luck out of it, and I was actually looking forward to this one. This is uh, this was actually one of the ones that we were, we were about ready to make the purchase on ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I would have actually, I probably will buy one. I'm probably just so we have a second one. Yeah. Um, but that being said, right about the same time that I was about ready to pull the trigger on physically buying one, Griffin Armament actually hit us up and said, hey, what are you guys looking for? What do you want? Uh, we'd love to send you some product. So once again, thank you, Griffin Armament. Yeah. Uh, check out their website. Um, 
They have a ton of fantastic products. We have uh, a lot of products in the future. One of the ones that we're really looking forward to is their P PSR can. Uh, that one is really, really cool. It's kind of like, uh, you know, falling into that Mark 12, kind of more of a precision. Which we don't have here. a Mark 12, and <laughs> you know, addiction, yeah. you know. So. But, uh, yeah, you could tell that can looks legit. As far as, like, them putting that same mounting solution that's on the dual lock, they put it on their PSR-7, which is for accuracy and for marksmanship type of rifles. Yeah. Um, it's, a solid, it's a solid mounting solution. So, um, yeah, we'll continue to provide updates in our future build videos. Um, at the end of the day, though, guys, like, and this is why I say I hate specs. Yeah. Um, it's not because I hate specs specifically, but people can get you can get I'm, this my, the, I'm guilty the, the, myself the first time if you could not tell yeah the very first time that we looked at the specs on this can was tonight <laughs> yeah uh, because they, like, at the end of the day they really don't matter correct yeah that much it's it's based on what you like so yeah. um we're giving you our opinion of this can mm -hmm. uh if, obviously if you come out and train with us or something like that most likely you'll see this can on a rifle and you want to shoot it you want to get some time behind it mm -hmm. because you're considering buying it uh if you see us uh out training at the ranch or something like that say hey you got that griffin armament dual lock can because i'd love to shoot one before i buy one yes you know hit us up because we would definitely definitely gladly allow you to run it on one of our rifles yeah um, but that being said the, the only way that you can really truly at the end of the day determine an opinion on if you really like something is is getting that product and getting out and putting some time behind it putting some reps in behind it mm -hmm. and physically training so it doesn't matter how much money you invest into something if you do not train with it you're going to be nothing more than an internet operator correct so I mean, at the Indian camp, they had really good arrow makers, and yeah. then they had the warriors. So it's all Be about the Indian. Yeah. Be a warrior. No. That runs a dual lock. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. A lot of great cans yeah. out there on the market, guys. Tons of them to choose from. Um, you know, this is a fantastic one. We are really enjoying it. Like I said earlier, we're sitting about 2,000 rounds to it. Mm -hmm. So we'll give you another update probably on maybe like uh, we, have a, we have a pretty cool little 12.5 build that we just put together. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do a breakdown on that one. So probably put a couple thousand rounds through that rifle running yep. this can. It'll mm -hmm. be featuring it. It's sitting right up here if you can kind of see it maybe. So yeah. uh, kind of mix a little old school and new school. Yeah. Well, guys, if you guys want to see any behind-the-scenes updates as far as builds or live videos, we just did a live video with Risky Crisky on Instagram. Go check us out on Instagram. And then also... Uh, Which that video was really cool. So, yeah. yeah I actually he's said bald. That. Yeah, he's he bald. Shaved he shaved his head. His head. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, exactly. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? But uh, yeah, go check out our Instagram page. Also, Roy and myself and Tyler have our own Instagram page. It's Eric or Roy Barrel and Hatchet. Uh, so go check those out. If you know, have any questions, just send us a DM. Also, go check out the website. Come sign up for classes. We have our next class. is going to be up in Pen Pennsylvania at Benjamin Franklin Range. Yes. It'll be a night vision class yeah, and night a medical. night vision and a medical class. Yeah. So if you're in PA or close to PA or close to Benjamin Franklin, I would highly suggest that you guys sign up for that medical class. Mm -hmm. um, Very important. Fantastic class. We just held, held one here this week. Um, last here, night, actually. Yeah, last night. Yeah. And students were blown away with it. Uh, Todd is a phenomenal instructor. Me and Eric are not intelligent enough to teach that class, mm. so we, we will not take credit for that. No. But our medical instructor, Todd, with uh, Guardian Angel, yeah. um, is a fantastic instructor. Blown away, once again, that's probably the fifth or sixth time that I've been through the class. Assisting, learn something every day. And I learn always. something every single time. Yeah, so Because he's time. constantly a student. Once again, you guys should do the exact same thing. Always be a student. And don't be a liability. Make sure that you are the asset. Guys, make sure you guys go out and train. And also, have a good day. Yeah, I guess man. we'll see you on the next one. Right. God bless you. See you. <laughs>